Hey y'all, Phil here with High Tech Legion, and I'm going to be looking at overclocking of the MSI N660 uh, Gaming. This is a GTX 660 with the Twin Frozer 4 cooler on it. It uh, comes pre overclocked from the factory to 1006 MHz. Now, uh, the base clock for this card, uh, for the initial reference card, is 980 MHz, so that's up. Uh, this one comes from the factory with an extra 26 megahertz, and uh, so the overclocking process for this one, which is a Kepler, depends on offsets rather than setting the uh, speed which the card will be running at. So we see here in MSI's Afterburner program, we have a core clock uh, with a, met a slider underneath, and this is how we adjust the offset. What the offset does is it takes the uh, the base clock and it readjusts the base clock to uh, say if I put this here at 38, then it would adjust the base clock to 1006 plus 38, giving us uh, 1044 megahertz. Uh, same thing for the memory clock. Uh, it's a little different though. When this one, see here, when I set this one to uh, plus say plus 50 and I hit apply over here you'll see it only goes up by about 25 megahertz on the uh, over here on GPU Z and that's because uh, it's DDR so this plus 50 gets cut in half for what you see over here on GPU Z now for the overclocking process itself MSI has for those who are not very familiar with overclocking or just don't want to have to uh, think about it too hard, they've uh, started releasing their gaming app which uh, provides three overclock presets for their cards. So we have a silent mode which downclocks this one to the 980 megahertz, uh, same speed as a reference GTX 660. The gaming mode which happens to be the uh, standard base clock that we're at right now and an OC mode which adds another little overclock on top of the standard base for the card. So and you can see here if I click silent mode it goes, it sets the clock speed. The windows kind of rearrange themselves because of uh, changing the graphics mode and you can see it's set itself to uh, 980 megahertz. Now when I click gaming mode it'll bump it back up to the 1006 All right, and okay, and let's go ahead to OC mode. All right, over here GPU Z, you can see the base clock has gone up. In MSI Afterburner, you can see that the core clock has offset has been set to plus thirty, and that's uh, now the uh, increase that we see over here in GPU Z. So. Uh, it's pretty simple to use that. They also included this uh, cooldown mode, which for five minutes will set the fan at about 70% so it can cool off. Even if I click that and turn it on, uh, the Twin Frozer is a really nice design. You can see over here that the fan speed is at 70%, but you know it's still really not all that loud uh, compared to. Uh, when it was just running at 20%. In fact, you, you can't even hear it at 20%, and it's just barely audible at 70%. Alright, now we'll take a look at how to do uh, regular overclocking. As you can see, when you exit out of the MSI Gaming app, it removes the overclock. All right, I'm gonna overclock now using MSI's Afterburner Util Utility, and uh, go ahead and run Unigen in the background so we can see the clock speeds. All right, okay, our sensor's running. Now, <clears throat> uh, when you're overclocking Kepler, it automatically boosts based on how much power the card is using, See here, we're only using 72% at this time. 
and the cards are only running at 1006 megahertz. If I bump the power volt up, you can see it's now using 1124 megahertz, and the cards at uh, about 91 90 percent of the actual possible output of the card or power consumption of the card. Uh, you see over here GPU Z 1124. Now, if this is it boosts automatically based on how much headroom there is on the power percentage, how much headroom there is on temperature, uh, voltage, and all that. The max voltage for this card is uh, 1.175. Uh, it can probably go a bit further, uh, but unfortunately, it's locked on this on the GTX 660s. Cannot be changed, so we'll just ignore that slider. Um, now, the power percentage here can be a little misleading because it says 91%, but really, that total 100% is the combination of fan power usage, memory u power usage, and uh, GPU power usage. So it says 96%, but that means we're actually running about a little over what the power limit on the GPU itself is. So you see if I remove that, the uh, thing over here bumps down to 1006 because it's using 100% of the GPU, it's not using 100% on the, the fan or the memory. So, uh, <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is we're going to overclock. It's the same kind of philosophy as other overclocking. You make uh, rather large jumps at the beginning until you get to the point that you're unstable, and then you start making smaller jumps from your last stable clock speed. So let's go ahead. Um, it has to be increments of 13. So you see here if I set 10 megahertz, you'll notice that there is no change over here. GPU Z says it's the base is 1016, but there's no change in the actual running clock speed. If I set it to 13, you'll see that over here, indeed, it went up to this is up by 13, and now this is also up by 13. So you have to uh, units increase by multiples of 13. Let's make our first jump to 39 megahertz which is 13 times 3 and you can see we have a matching increase over here uh, both in GPU Z and on our monitor program now at this point after you make each jump you want to run a series of benchmarks so uh, let's make the assumption that we ran through Unigen Heaven three times and uh, 3D mark a couple times uh, and everything came out stable. So let's bump this up by another three units of 13. So that would be 78 or 13 times 6. Click apply. Okay, you can see the increase over here on afterburner monitor and you can see the increase over here on GPU Z. Um, so now we let that, you again go through your same benchmarks, increase again. So 117, apply, and you can see that it's all Unigen Heaven is instantly unstable at that speed. So let's bump it back down to 78, apply, start Unigen back up. Okay. And then, so instead of going up by uh, 13 times 3, let's go up by 13 times 1, which would put us at plus 91 megahertz. Click apply, changes over here and over here, run through it, continue running through until you hit another unstable speed. And uh, whatever your last stable speed was, that's where you can set it to. Now you want to move on to overclocking the memory, so you want to reset set the core back to zero and start overclocking your memory. Memory you can make but much bigger jumps because it's already running at three gigahertz, well really effectively six gigahertz. So you just set it to jump by 150, apply, run through your benches, set it to 300, enter, apply, uh, run through your benches again. You can see 
here we go we're up by 150 here but remember it's DDR so you gotta double that so we're up by another 150 megahertz apply so and also when you're overclocking it's not just gonna be uh, programs aren't always going to crash you sometimes you'll just see like maybe this post would be at a weird angle or something or something slightly discolored wrong textures is there any number of ways that you can have artifacts happening inside your benchmark to show that you're unstable alright so 450 oh apply and you know let's just say 450 was unstable so we go back to 300 apply and then we'll increase from 300 the last speed we tried say to 350 and then maybe 400 and again working back go back to your last when it crashes or you get glitches go back to your last stable overclock and start working from there in smaller increments until you get something that is uh, until you can't go any higher all right, that's the process for overclocking uh, them individually. Then you want to overclock them together. So say this guy's 350 and set this one to 65. Then you can apply both, run through your benchmarks again to make sure that, again, everything is stable. If everything is uh, indeed stable, then be happy and use it. It's possible that when you put them together, it won't not be stable. So you have to, to decrease one or the other. All right, guys, this is our video for overclocking MSI's N660 Gaming, the GTX 660 that came out uh, a short while ago. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments. Um, and check us out also on... Uh, Facebook and Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and check us out on our website, www.hightechlegion.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.